story starts on Canal Street in New Orleans in 1908, where Abraham Shulman exhibited a new form of entertainment, motion pictures, the movies. Shortly thereafter, Abraham found his way to Houston, where he opened the very first Shulman Theater in 1910. Through the sweat on his brow and good old American ingenuity, Abraham managed to turn that one theater into a whole chain throughout the city. Then in 1926, Abraham sold them all and heard the call to go west. He headed to the land of the Maroon and landed in Bryan, Texas. Into our hero, young Billy Shulman. He was born to Morris and Edna Shulman just six weeks before the move to Bryan. It was there that Billy's father, Morris, and grandfather Abraham purchased two new theaters, the Queen and the Dixie, located on Main Street. But they didn't stop there. The dynamic father-son duo purchased the old Bryan City Hall in 1928 and converted it to the Palace Theater. A true marvel of its day, the Palace showed both vaudeville stage films and the new talkies, including Jazz Singer, the first film of its kind. Then, in 1935, the unthinkable happened. Billy's father, Morris, passed away, leaving Billy's mother, Edna, to take over the family business. And take over she did. Edna Blondie Shulman carried on Morris's innovative spirit, never settling for the mediocre. In 1939, Blondie said, So long, Queenie, and rebuilt the Queen Theater as the only conditioned air theater this side of the Mississippi. And you can bet little Billy wasn't just spinning his wheels. He had grown into a strong, capable young man, ready to help grow the family business. Here he is doing his best strongman impression. Looking good, Billy. As World War broke out and the Axis powers invaded country after country, America asked its citizens, who will stand up for freedom? Well, Billy jumped up and shouted, I will, and sailed off to the Pacific to give old Emperor Hirohito what for. Go get him, Billy! After the war, Bill returned home and in 1946 began attending A&M University. And in 1948, he emerged from college, the movie man, ready to take over the family business. Bill's life really took off. He married his lovely wife, Christine, had three strong boys, Morris, Mark, and Craig, and expanded the Shulman Empire. Blondie, Bill, and his brother Al were hands-on theater owners, with Blondie often driving up in her long peak Cadillac to crack the whip down at the Queen. Bill was often seen strolling down the street to the theater, kids in tow, big cigar in his mouth, ready to take care of business. He was often heard telling his mother, Calm down, Blondie, I'll take care of it. It was the golden age of cinema. Prices were low, the pictures were big, and Cokes only cost a nickel. The Shulmans continued to expand, showing big-name movies like The Alamo to sold-out houses and meeting movie stars like Charles Colburn. They opened drive-ins and multiplexes, including the Mena East 3, one of the first six theaters to use the Dolby Sound stereo system. The Mena was so popular, it set a world record by running The Man from Snowy River for 38 consecutive weeks, longer than any other theater. In his later years, Bill moved to Crockett and reopened the historic Ritz Theater. It was there you would find him, working the ticket booth with his wife, always with a smile on his face, saying, enjoy the show. In the last days of his life, Bill was happy. He had created a lasting legacy of bringing happiness and joy to thousands. He was surrounded by his loving family, including his wife, sons, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Even from the hospital, Bill was hard at work helping decide which movies to book in his Crockett Theater. Truly a great man, Bill the Movie Man Shulman will be remembered above all as a man who loved to make others happy. As Bill always said, Aggies never lose, they just run out of time. Gig'em.